If you're a teacher and you'd like to set up a Slack workspace for a class to use, um, I'm about to do that with one of my algebra classes, and so I thought I would set it up in the in a video, and then that way you could kind of see how to do it and also how to look at the settings to figure out how you want them set for your class. So first of all, there's probably some features in Slack that you just haven't investigated because you have been just a user of it. Now you're going to become an owner and a workplace or workspace administrator. So some things are going to change a little bit. So a couple of things. First of all, up here, you may not have noticed this, but in your Montrose High School channel, it says Montrose High School and there's a pull down. If you click on that pull down, you get another menu. And so there's some things here that you'd want to know. So for example, on this menu, when you create your space, you can invite people to the channel. You can create a new channel from this menu. There's other ways to do it too. Your preferences part, um, I'll show you later, is a place where um, I like to set the background colors and the navigation colors for each workspace to different colors. So it just jumps out at me which class I'm in. We're going to spend time in the settings and administration part. But down here is a place to add a workspace, which we're about to do in a minute, and also switch workspaces. So you can see right here, I've already got my Algebra 1 Period 2 workspace. I'm also going to add an Algebra 1 Period 3 workspace. So that's what we're going to do together. So I'm going to go Add Workspaces and create a new workspace. It's going to ask me for my email. So I'm going to enter my email. It's going to send me a confirm code. Unclick that. So I've got my email open and ready to get that message. So it's going to send me an email here. And my confirmation code 763551. Oops. Okay. So on this one, what's the name of my company or team? In my case, it's going to be Algebra 1, period 3. I'll go next. Now this one, what's a project your team is working on? Whatever you type here, it's going to make a channel for that. I'm going to put Team 1 because I know I'm going to name channels for each of my working teams. Um, and then this part is, is optional. I'm just going to hit skip for now because who do you email most? You could put emails in here, but you don't have to do it right now. Okay, so now um, we're just going to take a look at the first channel um, and it's going to have all the default settings. Hopefully this one will open. Last time it was a little slow to open, but we'll take a look at it. Okay, so this happened to me before, not to panic. Um, I'm just going to copy the sign in key. And then I'm going to click on the little Slack icon that's right here at the top of the page. When I did this at school, it opened just fine. I think it's just I have slower Wi-Fi at home. Okay, so it just takes me to the general page. And then when I go to launch Slack, my period three, my new class is right here. So I'm going to click on that. And it opened, it should open just fine. Okay, so here's my new team. Okay, now here... Um, I can type in the email address and the name for each uh, kid in my class. That's one way I can do it. I can share a link with them. Um, I can also like send them kind of a, um, you know, kind of a, a way to start with this, and I might do that later on. But right now, I'm just going to set things up in a general way. So notice I have a general channel, a random channel, which is kind of that water cooler banter off topic stuff. And you might go, oh, I don't want that in my class. I'll show you how to delete that in a minute. And there's the team one channel. And I can add more channels by hitting this plus and it'll let me add. There's other ways to do it as well. So I'm going to delete this random channel just so I don't have to look at it and the kids don't have it. So notice I can, if I, I right clicked on random, that's how I got this little uh, menu here. And then um, I don't want to really mute it because that just means I wouldn't see it, which is no good. I don't really want to leave it. I want to delete it. So I need my additional options to do that. And it just gives me other options and delete is here at the bottom. Yes, I want to do that. I think they make it hard to delete a channel just to make sure you're really sure you want to. Okay, so let's do a couple of things in here first. I'm going to go to Preferences, 
and I'm going to choose my theme just to be different than my other classes just so everybody has their own color code. So how about I use, I don't know, and again, this is just for me, uh, although I think my kids will see it this way too. So I think I'm just going to use this um, Mondrian, why not? And if I don't like it, I can always change it later, okay? I can also, by the way, sorry, one other thing on that menu, you might want to look at is your notifications. This is where you can determine how many notifications you get. Um, do you want to see all of them? Do you want to see none of them? And so forth. And down here is kind of a schedule for it. You can set it so you only get notifications inside the school day. Um, you can also kind of decide how they're going to look and so forth. Okay. Keep in mind when you do this, if there's any new activity in a channel, it'll be in bold kind of at the top as sort of new activity. So you'd be able to click on those channels and see if there was activity there like when you were logged out. Okay. All right. So the next thing we're going to do, though, is on the same menu, we're going to go down here to settings and administration to workplace settings settings and administration, workplace settings. It's going to open a new window. And so this is where um, you're going to have uh, to set up a few security things. So I'm going to point out some things that I think you might want to do. So first of all, how are people going to join the workspace? And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say allow invitations and approve invitations for email addresses from mcsd.org. Don't worry, you're not making it a free-for-all to join your space because we're going to set a little later that every single person has to be approved by you. Unless you don't want to do that, in which case you can not set this or have it allow invitations any way you want. The way Slack is set up, any member, and all your students would be members, not guests, will be able to invite other members. But you get a chance to approve them before they actually come into the space. And I'll show you where to do that in just a minute. Okay. Uh, here you can set things like if, if for some reason you want a different language to show up. Um, and then down here are the name guidelines. Okay. So members are allowed to set up a name that they want to use. But you might worry about what kind of name they might choose. But what we can do here under name display is say, okay, let's show your full name instead of your display name. And that might help us a little bit. And keep in mind, you can set these expectations for your students. If anybody is inappropriate in the Slack channel, you can kick them out. Okay, so there's no reason that you have to put up with bad behavior on a Slack channel. Um, the other thing you can do here is these do not disturb hours, which might be good. It says automatically disable notifications from a certain time. So I'm actually going to set this from 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I don't think kids need to be, you know, doing that unless they've set up some, you know, if, if they're working together and they want to do something in the evening, they can still access it, but they're going to get no uh, notifications coming to their iPad or their phone. And that's pretty appropriate. You can also make sure Slack lets you know when somebody joins or leaves a channel. You're going to get the message via a Slack bot, and I'll show you where that happens. But essentially, you're just going to have it where you can go back and kind of see who's trying to access what. Um, that's pretty much it for this menu that I would look at at this point. I would, however, go to permissions for sure. Here we want to set who can use, there's a, a way to notify everyone, like everyone in the whole workspace, and at channel. And right now it's pretty liberal. Pretty much anybody can use that. You might decide, no, nah, I'd like that to be uh, workspace owners and admins. That would, you're both owner and admin. And the same thing for this one. Now it gives you this little notice that says, hey, members can't mute those, so if you send a ton of them all the time, they're going to start ignoring them, so use them sparingly. Fair. Okay. And then save. Invitations. This one, just require admin approval. So make sure that's checked, and you should be good to go, because essentially every invitation is going to come to you for approval. 
and you're going to have to approve them all. And that helps you keep control over it. This is an important one, this channel management. Again, it's set very liberally. Who can create channels, create public channels, and, and so forth. They, you'll see they default to kind of everyone. So I'm just going to set this to admin. I can always loosen it up later. But for now, this just gives me a lot of control over this space. My users should be able to do all the things they need to do, but um, they don't have a lot of permission to like go create, say, a private channel and not and exclude me from it or something like that. Um, these paid features one, keep in mind on the free version, there are certain things you can't do, so just keep that in mind. Um, message editing and deletion is set defaults to people can edit their messages and delete them. If you want to change that, you can. Um, who can manage Slack bot responses? And again, um, I'm going to just put, I'm just going to unclick that. And last, I, I guess that's it. Okay. So once I have those set, it's pretty restrictive space, but I want it that way. And now when I go back to my um, space, and again, I can reaccess that by going to settings and administration again. And under the customized part, I can do things like I can add images. I can, you know, do all kinds of things if I want to do them. So like I can make a workspace icon and so forth. So there's a lot that I can do here. Feel free to explore that. You can set up emojis that you want your students to be able to use. Custom emojis. I mean, the sky's the limit. So right now it's a very simple Slack. Um, notice I can add a channel. I'll do that just to show you how it looks. So I'm going to call it Team 2. And I can either add specific people if I want to, so I can type in specific emails or names once kids are in the system, or I can just say automatically add anybody who joins the class. And you can go back and change this later. Okay? So keep in mind. Where and you're like, where am I going to get notified? Like, if kids want to join, you're going to get notified via the Slack bot. Okay. And just to show you, I'm going to go back to the Montrose High School space and I'll show you a little bit about what that looks like when you have members. And I didn't change it. Like, I, it's a much more open space for you guys for what I hope are obvious reasons. But um, as you can see in here, this is kind of what it looks like. So it just says, here are these people they joined via an invite link. And it says here, if you need to disable the link or change your notification settings, you can go to this page and it has it even linked for us. And here's an important one, or open your member list if you need to activate the, or deactivate this new user. So if I go to my member list for my space, and let's say I see, you know, uh, I don't know, some dumb name or somebody I don't think should be part of that space, this gives me a list of members and I could, if I wanted to, I won't do it, but I could certainly go in there and change the, um, uh, I could basically kick this person out, okay? And so I'd probably do that by deactivating it, okay? Deactivate that account. And that would let me um, kick him out of there, okay? I can also invite people from here, so this could be a place to um, start up with, um, you know, members. If you have a kid you're really worried about, you could also put them in as a multi-channel guest, guest, and so they have a little bit limited, more limited access. Okay. So those are some things you could think about for if you had a really, you know, if you're worried, really worried about somebody. Um, okay. Well, I hope this has been helpful. If you have other questions, you can ask me. I don't know everything about it, but I could certainly try to track the answer down for you. Good luck.